In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a basic logo, sketch or drawing and turn it into an eye-catching visual using Stable Diffusion. I will also teach you how to put all your logo designs together and turn them into an animated clip. I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Gigabyte Aurus. Knowing that AI tools like Stable Diffusion require some serious hardware, especially a strong GPU, Gigabyte sent me their beautifully designed Aorus 17X laptop that comes with some of the highest specs in the market, including a 13th gen i9 processor, a 4090 RTX GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So let's see if this slim flagship gaming laptop can handle stable diffusion without lagging or overheating. And let's see if having more VRAM actually speeds up the AI generation process. Keep watching to find out because the best part is this same Aorus 17X laptop can be yours for free. More about that later in the video. To get started, you need to install Stable Diffusion. Head to the link below and make sure you download the latest version. Once you have the auto installer downloaded, choose a folder location and click on install. Once that's done, go to the web UI auto installer folder and launch the A1111 web UI file. When this window pops up, click on yes. Wait until this window appears, enable auto update for the web UI and extensions. Now, if you're using a GPU with less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you will need to enable the low VRAM option. To check how much VRAM your GPU has, open the run app and type in dxdiag, then click on open. Next, go to the display tab and you will see how much VRAM you have right here. The GPU on the Aorus 17X I have here is built to handle stable diffusion without any issues. So I'm going to leave the low VRAM option disabled, enable Xformers and click on launch web UI. Depending on your internet speed, this may take several minutes to download all the necessary files. Once that's done, the automatic 11.11 UI will launch on your browser. You can also open it from your stable diffusion web UI folder by running the web UI dash user path file and then opening this address in your browser. There are a few more things we need to set up. First, we need to install control net, which is important for maintaining the structure and outlines of our logo. And I will explain more about that in just a minute. I will leave a link to control net in the description and to install it, simply copy this GitHub link and head back to Stable Diffusion under the extension tab, open install from URL and paste the link there. Click on install and give it a few minutes to download. Once it's done, go to the install tab and click on refresh UI. And now it's time to install a control net model called Lineart. You can find the link to it on the same installation page. For now, we only need the Lineart model to download it. Right click on this icon and click on save link as. Go to your stable diffusion web UI folder, look for the extensions folder, then open the models folder and simply save the file there. To determine the style of the generated image, we need to use a stable diffusion model. For this concept, the epic realism model has given me really good results. You can find the link to it in the description. Right click on the download button, choose save link as and go to the stable diffusion web UI directory. Look for the models folder, stable diffusion and save the file there. Once downloaded, refresh the models list and select epic realism. Now let's get to the most important part of this whole process and that's prompting. This step is crucial because it will determine the overall look of our image. Personally, I want the images to look like they were taken from a drone. So I included the keyword bird's eye view in my prompt. Next, I described the environment with simple words such as glacier, white iceberg, and Antarctica. I also added a few extra keywords to help improve the overall quality of the image. You can also use negative prompts to describe what you don't want in the image. This can help you to refine your output and get more specific results. To get started with the settings, we need to change the sampling method to DPM++ SDE Keras. You can keep the sampling steps to 20, but feel free to increase it if you want better quality outputs. Keep in mind that it will slow down the generative process. Also, make sure to set the width and height to match the aspect ratio of your logo. For this demo, we're using the Aorus logo in square format, so 1024 by 1024 
should work just fine. You can actually upload your logo in any size and if you want to customize it for a specific platform, just use Photoshop or any other photo editing software to resize it. Make sure you fill in the blank areas with solid white and match the aspect ratio in your stable diffusion settings and then you're good to go. You can leave the CFG scale at 7. If you go higher than that, your generated image will conform more to your prompt. Just keep in mind that going over 15 will most likely give you some distorted results. Next, scroll down to the control net section and upload your input image. Keep in mind that this works best if the logo is in black with a white background, then enable control net. If you have a lower end GPU, enable low VRAM and you can also enable pixel perfect for better results. Next, change the control type to linear and for the preprocessor, choose invert, then change the control net model to linear. If you can't find it on the list, click on the refresh button and it should appear. I usually set the control weight to 1.2, which helps to preserve the structure of the logo. Finally, change the size mode to resize and fill. Once we've made these changes, we can click on generate and stable diffusion will do its magic. Check it out guys, I really like the result here. It, it looks super realistic and detailed. You can change the environment description and give it another go. It looks pretty good, but it seems like we lost some of the logo structure and it's hard to separate it from the environment. To fix that, increase the control weight and give it another try. So as you can see, the higher the weight, the more structure your logo will have in the generated image. I cranked it all the way up to 2 and the results were way better. But keep in mind, different prompts will require different weights. So I will keep the weight at 2, but change the environment to something new. And as you can see, the logo structure is still there, but we are not getting enough of the elements we described in the prompt. Let's bring the weight back down to 1.2 and give it another go. Maybe we can try increasing the weight to 1.5 instead. It's actually much much better than before. I'm gonna try a volcano eruption and wow check out the insane amount of detail in this one. Soon in this video I'm going to show you how to fine tune your results and get rid of any pixelation. I've played around with a bunch of different prompts and found some really cool ones that I shared on Patreon. I will leave the link below so you can check it out if you're interested. Now here's a cool trick. You can increase the batch size to get several generations at once. This way you can choose which one you like best. Just keep in mind that this will increase the processing time. On the Aorus 17X AZF laptop, this took about three minutes to process. I tried the same settings on an older model with only 8GB of VRAM and actually I was hit with this error. I spent so much time trying to figure it out and eventually solved it by reinstalling Stable Diffusion and enabling low VRAM. I wanted to compare the speed so I also generated a 10 seconds deform animation on both devices and the difference in time proves that having more VRAM will definitely speed up the process. And let me tell you, the Aorus 17X handled it really well. I could multitask without any lag or overheat even though it's one of the thinnest gaming laptops out there and this is thanks to its four powerful fans and efficient cooling technology. And speaking of cooling, you can use the Gigabyte Control Center to monitor the usage and temperature of your components and you can easily use it to edit your fan settings and customize the RGB lighting effects into something that fits your taste. Now if you're wondering where to find the images that you generated, just head over to your Stable Diffusion folder find the outputs folder and then look for the text to image folder all of your generated images will be organized by date and sorted there in order to make the output look even better i imported the image into adobe lightroom for some color grading first i added some contrast lowered the shadows and increased the highlights a bit then i slightly pushed up the texture clarity and dehaze to enhance the details so feel free to follow my lead if you want similar results. Of course, the adjustments will depend on your image. As you can see, color grading really makes a difference and the image look much better overall. And speaking of looks, the Aorus 17X also has a stunning design, a 17 inch QHD display with 240 Hz refresh rate and a high capacity 99 watt hour battery for extended on the go use.
boost. And guess what? This high specs laptop can be yours for free. All you need to do is head over to the link below and enter the giveaway for a chance to win the same Gigabyte Aorus laptop used in this video. Now back to the tutorial, if you want to take the quality of outputs even further, you can do this with a powerful software called Topaz Photo AI, which you can download from the link below. Once installed, you can run it directly from Lightroom. All you have to do is right click on your image, go to edit in and choose Topaz Photo AI, select edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And the best thing here is that you can preview the results live on your screen. I will go with the high fidelity AI model here and enable sharpen. You will notice that Topaz Photo AI is really good at adding details and reducing pixelation. Once you're satisfied with the preview, save the upscaled version and it will appear instantly in your Lightroom. Finally, export your image by going to File, Export, choose an output location, adjust your export settings if needed, click on Export, and that's it. So once you've got a bunch of cool output images that you're happy with, it's time to take it to the next level and create a looping video to showcase your logo in different environments. We're gonna use Adobe After Effects, right click here and select Import File. Make sure you select the first image in the folder, then enable Import JPEG Sequence and enable Force Alphabetical Order and click on Import. Next, right click on the imported sequence, go to interpret footage, main, and change the frame rate to 4. Then drag the sequence and drop it onto the new composition icon. Let's hit the spacebar to check out the animation. Looking good. To export the animation, go to composition, add to render queue, and make sure your output format is set to H264. Open the render settings and change the frame rate to 25. Then click OK, choose where you want to save the video, rename the file if you want, and click on save and then render. And that's it. Stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.